Hey, what's up, guys? Today I played a rapid tournament amongst 90 players. I came fifth. I was leading most of the tournament in the crucial game. In plus 17, I managed to lose, but I guess that's the beauty and that's also like the point of chess. Doesn't matter. Amongst all those games, uh, nine games uh, were played. I made six wins, one draw and two losses. I want to show you the most beautiful one of all those. It was against 2100 player from Libya. I was black and the guy used very solid but hyper boring London system with white. But you know what? You have it on the channel here. Find the video and find a way and how I explain you to kill the London system. Let's immediately get to the point and show you how did I crush him. He went for d4. I played knight f6. He played knight f3. I went for g6. You know that I like King's Indian. He went for bishop f4, bishop g7, e3, castles, bishop e2, d6, castles. And here I'll once again uh, bring up the name of a good friend of mine, Grandmaster Nikola Sedlak from Serbia, who made a, an amazing book about the London system. And he's one of the main representatives of this system in the world with white pieces. And uh, when I call him by phone and ask him, Johnny, please give me something good. But at the same time, I know it's going to sound weird, aggressive against the London. He said, my own knight f to d7 is something you should try out. Mm -hmm. And I tried it out so many times, all my students as well. And the experience is so positive. So I played knight f to d7. And just like you know, and as you can see, I like to go and break in the center with e5 and go and harass the dark square bishop on f4. My opponent played c3. Uh, in my opinion, it's not the most accurate move, especially because afterwards he had to admit his mistake and played c4. Uh, some ideas with c3 is to support some b4 or to go with the queen on b3 in some positions or to go with the knight bd2, knight c4 fighting against e5. Naturally, he was supposed to go with h3, e5, bishop h2, and I would go with knight c6. And you have everything about this on one of the videos, how to beat up London system with uh, this aggressive setup, knight after d7, knight c6. He went for c3 and I went, of course, with e5. Any, any type of d takes e5, we always take by pawn. And after bishop g3, your position is very lovely uh, when you put, for example, your knight on c6 or, for example, when you put your queen on e7. Uh, my opponent went for bishop to g3 and I played knight c6. He instantly played a4 and you know what? He took this position for granted, check a couple of games in London system, you can immediately see that. And he's just uh, following his basic ideas and plans here. I said, okay, I'm also gonna follow my basic plan and I went for f5. Who knows about the video, how to crush London? You guys know what am I actually trying to do here? I'm trying to either push g5 and go with all this crazy pawn storm on the king's side, or I just want to go with another plan with e4 followed by knight f6 and knight e7. So I'm going to put uh, green marks on one plan and yellow marks and uh, sorry arrows on the second plan. My opponent went with h3 after quite a big amount of thinking, and I instantly played e4 because I'm always happy when I kick the knight away and when I remove the defender, because we both know that the best defender in chess of the king is the knight. So I went for, uh, with e4. My opponent uh, went with knight f6. Uh, sorry, I played knight f6. And he went with c4. Uh, this is the moment uh, that I actually uh, mentioned previously. And I said he now admitted his mistake that the c3 was a waste of time. And he now plays c4. I instantly uh, put my knight back on e7 because I just want to go with g5 and knight g6. This is how I am actually preparing myself for final break f4 with possible f3 or with some other type of attacking ideas. My opponent went with knight c3, I played g5. He was very confused when I did this, but I, I'm just going to do some, some sort of experiment for you. Let's flip the board. And let's see how do white players feel in this position. Take a look at this one. It's not easy. He, uh, we're about to play knight g6, possibly f4, f3. 
uh, to go and to try to shut off the light square bishop. We also want to play in some lines h5, h4. Uh, what really happened in the game is something that I really enjoy. I played a game like this tournament game against international master from Serbia, Solomonovic. We drew the game, I was winning. Uh, but he was fighting very hard and uh, he managed to somehow make a draw eventually. Uh, right after that game, uh, I took a look at his positions and learned about some plans. In that game, my opponent went with f3. That's exactly what my opponent did here as well. He played f4, but it's the same thing. You always take. So after I captured, I was expecting to take by knight, but taking by knight, I was preparing myself for, believe it or not, bishop h6, where I have two kinds of ideas. g4, to kick the knight away and to go after the h3 pawn, and to go knight g6, supporting some g4 and f4 pushes. My opponent went with the bishop f3, and I instantly, without any thinking, because I was familiar with these positions and analysis, played g4. Can you imagine that I won this game in six moves? I played g4. I know it once again looks like a uh, hyper uh, odd, awkward, or even uh, you, you would say like it looks like uh, somehow aggressive, pseudo-aggressive system, but it really is aggressive. And when he captured on g4, I recaptured by pawn. All of a sudden, I'm not only threatening his bishop on f3, but I'm opening up f5 for my knight. He played bishop e2, I jump with the knight on f5. Very lovely knight on f5 that goes after both bishop on g3 and pawn on f2. They can't, uh, pawn on e3, they can't play bishop f2 because of g3 and e3 is fallen. He played only move and he put all his hopes into this move. I played knight h5. Since I instantly played knight h5, he was very confused. He thought that I couldn't play this move because of bishop g4, but I saw knight f4. And if he takes by pawn, you just take bishop d4 and some checkmate and knight e3 and so on. If he takes by rook, I would take by knight. Now his rook is threatened as, as well as queen and d1. And when he takes queen f8 and both of these pieces are hanging plus pawn and d4, he's losing a piece and he's under the mating threats. So after knight h5, he realized he couldn't move the bishop either because uh, even uh, g3, but of course, you just go with knight to e3 and you even have some queen h4 ideas. So he played bishop to d3. Interesting way of trying to defend himself. I took on f4, he took on f5. And now when I took on f5, he realized, uh, he just looked uh, at the board like this and made a facial expression like if I take by pawn, bishop d4, boom, checkmate. Then probably he thought for a moment, what if rook f4? I would take on f4, bishop d4, and queen h4. The king is going to get mated. Power of anti-London systems with a king's Indian approach, knight f to d7. My opponent went with a queen g4. 10, 9, 8, 7, black moves and wins. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I played final move. And he resigned the game. Knight h3, what a lovely move. If he takes by queen, I would take on f1 with check and take his queen. Uh, so I'm actually cleaning the f file so I can give check. And if he takes by pawn, I would have played rook g5 and win his queen uh, on g4. Hope that you enjoyed this game. And once again, I'm going to remind you, find my anti-London aggressive system and uh, you won't hate to play against London system anymore. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.